Fun. Okay. They got me for this other, <laughs> you know, discussion by old dudes and dudettes. Oh, my goodness. Look at all those people. Hey, yeah, welcome, everyone. Oh, and more Let's come. All. Yep, they keep showing up here. And then there's several dozen more, perhaps, on YouTube and Facebook that may join us at a later point. Right. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Turn your cameras on so we can see you. Mr. Yeah. Lieberman. Mr. Lieberman. So we'll just uh, make sure everybody gets in here. I'll start in a second. Give a, give a little introduction to the John Ross. Hey, man. Chris Brown. Hello, my brother. Oh, it's like did you get a haircut, wow, Donna? Look at all these guys. Look at all these yeah. guys. Ron mm -hmm. Angles here. Jeez, Sorry, you can't unmute bird. yourself. Just a sec. Skolnick lives in the Arctic. The Skypes Arctic? Skypes in from the Arctic, yeah. No. <laughs> Skolnick, he lives yeah. in Long Island, I think. <laughs> all right. I'm going to give an intro and we'll get started. Mr. So, Malazzi's here. Yeah. Welcome everyone to Piano Tech Radio Hour, where we talk to the coolest people in the piano industry every week here on Saturday. Absolutely. We were, as always, being brought to you by Piano Technicians Masterclasses, an online educational resource that offers you cutting edge instruction from piano industry masters without leaving your home. You can find out more about that at pianotechniciansmasterclass.com. We just finished our Second official online convention last weekend. It was great. Um, some of the recordings are available if you want to uh, just get a one-off peek at what was going on. So we'll put a link in the chat so you can do that soon. And uh, we hope you were able to en enjoy and get something out of that content. Really great stuff. Oh, there, was, uh, there was amazing classes. Amazing classes. I enjoyed it Incredible. thoroughly. Yeah, and, and really some stuff that you won't you won't have gotten a chance to to take get a glimpse at previously, like our session with David Clavins talking about how he put together the Unicorda piano and right. uh, or Paul McNulty. That. Paul or McNulty Paul, about Paul McNulty, pieces. the greatest period piece piano maker in the world, bar none. He was amazing. Yeah, great stuff. But today we're here to talk to Ricky Close. I'm very excited yes. to have her here. I've been sort of chit chatting with her over the past several weeks trying to book this session. And uh, we're going to have fun chatting. I'll give you a quick introduction so you can know a little bit of background on her. She's been in full time business since 1995 when she also joined the PTG. She became an RPT in 1998, became a certified tuning examiner in 2011. She has served as a delegate for several years and on numerous committees. She currently uh, really enjoys serving on the exam testing and standards committee, among others. Ricky has also served as president of the South Central Region Regional Conference Board and enjoys put, putting on conferences and weekend seminars to provide educational opportunities. She also enjoys assisting with the exam prep on the road series as a CTE. So she shares our passion for learning and education. So she's an ideal guest for us today. So Ricky, welcome. It's really great to have you here. Thank you. I'm very flattered to be asked. Thank you. Because there's a so, lot of us technicians around, so you could just interview any number of people. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, um, definitely, we're definitely excited about you in particular. <laughs> so... I didn't have any idea. I wasn't aware that this human being was alive until we were just talking about this 10, 12 years ago and got this random email from this woman that I thought maybe was an Austrian woman or some kind of Danish Dutch woman living in Ricky Klaus. Uh, and she just told me how deeply moved she was by my website, by my openness and authenticity and, you know, just the general vibe of my website and me. And it was just this incredibly literate, which is always good for me, 
literate and, and, and sweet and really good writing. And, and she said, well, we might never meet, but, and she was an RPT and she did all this. And, but, but if we ever do, I'd just like to hug your neck, she said. Yours, Ricky. And I was like, wow. So she put her, her phone number in there. So I, so I called her up and we've known each other ever since. And just, I have a tremendous respect for her as a human being and as a piano technician. And she's been a force in PTG for uh, gender equality and really proving that, you know, don't be an idiot. And, and don't be biased about human beings, right? And yeah. um, that's, I just have a tremendous amount of love and respect for her. And uh, oh, she can talk about a whole range of things. So I'm, I'm really excited about this song. Thank you. Yeah, also we're excited to have her to inspire other women to join us too, you know? So, and we also appreciate Absolutely. her for joining us. We've had a handful. Uh, but not that many, and it's not because we're, we're not uh, interested. Reaching so, out. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for tr being one of the trailblazers to, to join yeah. us. Yeah. Appreciate it's that. It's great. You're in good company. Sally Phillips. <laughs> really? Uh, it's amazing. And um, so, did you think of anything that you wanted to talk about? Uh, you know, I, I was kind of just hoping this would be a conversation um, that maybe we just have a, an easygoing conversation. I don't have any uh, skills to, to impart or anything like that. I, I am sort of an average technician out there serving the field. And um, I, I do some concert work, but not, not a ton. But I, I really enjoy doing uh, field work. And I always find that there are challenges there. So, yeah, I mean, I'll just say a little bit about myself. So I got into this probably in 1980. So I was 15 years old. Wow. My, my father was the, knew the local music store owner. He did a lot of uh, remodeling work for the music store owner. And so we bought our piano from them. And when I turned 15 and I had nothing to do in the summer, he said, hey, can you put her to work? And so they threw me in the piano department and uh, it could have been any department. It was a full service music store with band instruments and sheet music and guitar repair and everything. But it and was where was band. this? This is in Austin, Texas. Wow. Straight music company. And, uh, and so that's what I did. I was out in a hot warehouse at 15 and <laughs> the very first <clears throat> the very first day on the job, uh, <clears throat> it was a bunch of, I, it was in a warehouse where they had a whole bunch of trade-in pianos and stuff, but there was a one air, sort of air-conditioned office where all the, all the guys hung out, but they sent me out into the warehouse in July and said, here, here's a screwdriver, go open up that piano over there, and so... That piano, the very first piano I ever opened, which was an old upright, had a rat carcass in it. A rat carcass? Yes. Nice. Dried, dried up in bones. Congratulations. But, but still. Yeah. And uh, I kind of carefully picked it up with some other tools and carried it into the air conditioned part. And I said, is this what you guys wanted me to find? <laughs> you know? And they started laughing. Oh, she's not daunted. You know, she found it. She found it. So. To this day, I don't know if they knew. Wow, <laughs> you passed the test. I passed the test, I guess. So, so I did that for a few summers, and then I kind of went to college and tuned, uh, just, just you know, practice room pianos uh, at no charge. I was trying to get my chops, and then finally, which college? Uh, UT. Really? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you knew Charles? No, didn't know Charles. I just kind of. Stepped in and <laughs> tuned. Up. Oh, a rogue behind tuner. The scenes. Not knowing behind that there the was a, a rogue Under the radar. tuner. Yeah, baby. I'll admit so. to a little bit of that. I, I made friends <laughs> at the piano tech at my university, but they were definitely, I, he, you know, I, I forget what it was. 
we talked a little bit about getting to learn how to do stuff. I got a little bit of background. And he's like, yeah, we'll get you, you know, practicing on some pianos here and there. And yeah, I definitely pulled out, just went in some room with an upright that clearly I couldn't make any worse and, and got some practice in. It all, all was well in the end. Me. It never occurred to me that there was someone in charge of all those pianos because they were so out of tune. I just thought they threw them in there and that was that. So I never even bothered trying to find the technician of the, of the university. So, wow. um, but, but so I just kind of kept my chops up that way, but I wasn't doing it for a living. And then uh, I graduated finally from UT with a film degree, uh, believe really? it or not. Yeah. Oh, so fascinating. I was a music major once upon a time and I played French horn, but uh, I decided to, to, uh, to for me, the, the, music degree at that university was kind of political so you couldn't pass your juries if you weren't schmoozing with the right professor so Ooh. anyway so i i moved into film and, and i love doing that and then just as i graduated it, you kind of have to be willing to move to los angeles if you're going to get in the film industry and i was interested That's right. in editing post-production but i wasn't willing to move to los angeles from austin so uh, i just started working at the university in another capacity and it was not until then that I found out about the Guild. So back when I had worked at Straight Music Company, all those guys were piano tuners, but they, they had political beefs with the Guild, so they never mentioned it, not once. And I had no idea that there was a Guild. I wish I had known, because I would have joined. And so it wasn't until probably 94, 95 that, uh, that I was started going to Guild meetings. Uh, I finally met, ran into a couple of other technicians who told me about it. And so I went to guild meetings and it was a woman, her name was Robin Hoyt. Yeah. She, she, con she contacted me and she said, hey, I've been noticing you at the meetings. Um, are you interested in doing this full time at all? And I said, absolutely, but can you make a living at this? And she went, well, yeah, and I'm about to move away. And I work for the Steinway Ooh, dealer here. Wow. So, oh. you know, let me check some of your tunings and see, see how you do. And and she and I went literally to go tune pianos at the dormitories because I was in the housing and food department at the university. So I would tune the, the pianos at the university uh, at the, in the dormitories, just the grands in the lobby there. And she checked my tunings and she made some corrections and suggestions and I got better. And she said, OK, I think you're ready. I'm going to move wow. in about a month. Go audition for the Steinway dealer. And so. I didn't know I could do this for a living until then. And so 1995, I joined the guild and started my own business full time. That's and I love amazing. it. I love it. That's I love amazing. it because you can never know everything. You can't. You can't even know a little teeny bit. It's like <laughs> it's like people call me, you know, oh my God, you're so good. Your pianos are amazing. Blah, 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 blah. Your tuning is unbelievable. Blah. To me, it's just, it's a teeny little like inlet in the massive ocean of piano technology. Yes, I'm, I'm good at a few things that happen to be really important to making a piano sound great, but everything else, it's like, wow, I'm an apprentice. <laughs> yes. yes. I'm an apprentice, you know? It's so amazing because I got a break like that too, uh, because I because my tuning sounded good from the big from the get. I my my big ears of a musician helped me in the mm -hmm. in this in this craft because they let me do the thing that most people think. Oh well, they're good then, right? So I could tune a piano real good. So they thought I could do all this other stuff. I did the same thing. I went in and auditioned for a Steinway dealer and they thought, oh, he's good, shit. Well, let's get him to regulate this piano and do this. And I was like, ah, I have no idea. So failed upwards my whole career, basically. Sounds like, <laughs> and so you took advantage of the, of, of the guild right away. Right away. Tell me about that. Well, I joined the guild in 95 and I was just an eager beaver at going to the chapter meetings, you know, meeting people like Bernard Mulberg and cool. back then Tom C. <laughs> and yeah. um, 
and I had been introduced to the idea of what an RPT was and, and Tom and Mary Smith uh, encouraged me a, a whole lot to, to start trying to, to go for that. And it really, wasn't really until I went to my first, my first SCRC. Well, back then was TSA, but SCRC. And interestingly, Dave Durbin was a guest at, at our local regional and, and I had kind of met Dave Durbin and Jim Coleman and even Richard Bittner and of course, Jack Wyatt. And I'd met these guys and, and they were all just very, very encouraging. But it was kind of interesting because Dave Durbin was, I think on the executive committee at the time and he wanted you know, to encourage me to become an RPT so I could go to council and I could get involved in the political process. And mm -hmm. I suddenly, because I was kind of hanging out with them, and I think Jim Coleman was maybe running a close second to, to, to being elected on the board. Maybe he was an RVP at the time, I can't remember. But Dave Durbin would just really encourage me to, to, to kind of get involved in the political process. So I'm one of the few people I know who became an RPT to go to council. That's yeah. why I did it. Yeah. And uh, I've been trying to go to council ever since. I stopped and, you know, did some mothering and had babies and stuff for a while, but there, so I missed a few years there, but uh, truly I, I really enjoy the, the political process and the, and the inner workings of, of the guild, which is probably why I'm running for RVP finally this year. That's so awesome. I'll be jumping in that way too. It's PTG is beyond the shadow of a doubt, the greatest continuing education program in the world. Face to face. To be sure. Yeah. No question. 100%. I've... A... Go ahead. I'm just going to cut in here real quick. Uh, for those people watching on uh, YouTube, Facebook, we're going to sign off there. So there should be a link in the chat if you do want to come join us over here in the Zoom call. You're welcome to join us over here. I uh, just wanted to make that announcement and uh, we can get back to the conversation with Ricky. Yeah, I'm uh, very excited for you to be running for RVP. That, that sounds like a, a great Absolutely. So. I'm not running Good on idea. a post. <laughs> well, there you go. My current RVP wants to stay. You can walk RVP, then. So. You don't have to run. Just chill out. Just walk. You can saunter, saunter for <laughs> our RVP. <laughs> saunter for RVP. No, it's really important. It's really important to preserve the integrity of PTG. It's really important. It's really important to preserve this thing that's not.